In today's demo, pretty much what we're doing is we're going to demonstrate um, pH indicators, or should I say acid-base indicators. It's something that is actually you can actually do at home. Right here, I've got just a regular red cabbage. And in red cabbage, there's uh, a, a pigment called uh, anthocyanins that are actually um, uh, great indicators for acids and bases. You can actually try this at home if you like. Just make sure the windows are open because when I start to blend this, uh, it will smell. So what I've got in the, uh, in the blender, I've just got regular water. And what I do is I'm just going to peel off um, just some of the leaves from the red cabbage. Someone will actually boil this stuff and personally I think that'll stink worse. So let's. So what I'm doing right now, pretty much I'm uh, <coughs> just blending it. The smell back. hasn't come out yet. I don't want to know coughing. So all I'm doing is I'm filtering out all the little uh, chunks and I'm just really wanting to collect the, as much of the liquid as possible, which I think the whole... And now you can start to smell. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> what we have here right now is red cabbage juice. That's, That's all we have. Okay. And so what we can do is we put in regular household uh, chemicals. I have some chemicals I found in the uh, equipment storage room uh, as well. So some of the, uh, the things we have, I've got lemonade, right? I've got regular water, right? I've got baking soda, right? uh, I've got uh, just regular soda water, right? So the, just the carbonated part. I've got hydrogen peroxide used for as an antiseptic. I've got bleach. Here I've got drain cleaner, I've got sodium hydroxide, which is also used in some cleaning, uh, glass cleaner, I've got vinegar, right? and lastly I've got toilet bowl cleaner. So depending on the substance, we can actually determine whether something is considered an acid or a base. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to place a little bit of these in each one of these test tubes. So notice the color changes. And I don't think I did a good job of filtering out the pieces. Okay, so notice now the different colors. And notice which ones really didn't change much uh, color from its original. What we have here now, we've got different colors, right? And if you look at it, pretty much of all the colors that still remained, notice which one almost kept its color. The water. Because the water is considered, or pure water is considered neutral. It's at a pH value of 7. Depending on the uh, color, uh, the uh, red cabbage will actually turn pinkish red when it's in something that is considered acidic. When it's in something considered alkaline or basic, it will actually go towards the greenish yellow. What I have here, I've got various pH values. To measure the acidity or the alkaline of a substance, we use a pH scale, right? The power of the hydrogen. And that scale goes from 0 to 14. Any the closest we are to 0, the more acidic something is. The closer we get to 14, the more alkaline or the more basic it's considered. The pH value of 7 right in the middle is considered neutral. So anything smaller than 7 is more acidic. Anything greater than 7 is considered more basic. So I've got here now pH values going from 3 to 10. Right? So I'm missing pHs uh, that are lower than 3 and of course pHs that are higher than 10. And we're going to kind of look at them uh, over on this side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pour now and what we're going to see is we're going to see the different spectrum of colors in which red cabbage, as an indicator, will be used. <clears throat> We're going to see the different spectrum of colors in which red cabbage, as an indicator, will be used. <clears throat> so here in the pH value of 3, so we're talking about something that is considered acidic. 
So now the acidity is becoming less and less acidic as we're pouring them in. So notice the color change. So we're going now up to a pH value of 6. Now the neutral, pH 7, pH of 8, pH of 9, and a pH of 10. So look at the different colors that we have. And what we can use is we can actually use these mm -hmm, to almost compare the pH values or somewhat the pH values of these regular household um, substances. Right? So if I look at the different colors and I go, okay, which one of these you know, is probably closest to this color? Right? So we hear, look at this, lemonade pH value close to a, a pH value of 3. Uh, in fact, if you look this up, lemon juice has actually got a pH value of 2. So more or less, we've got pretty much very close in terms of the colors. Right? Using pretty much a color scheme like this, we can actually determine the pH value of various substances that we lie around. Other indicators or other things that we can use, something called phenolphthalein uh, uh, is going to be one of the chemicals we'll be using during the, our lab. Uh, there's something called red and blue litmus paper. <coughs> red litmus paper turns or stays red when it's in an acid, but it turns blue when it's put into a base. Blue litmus paper, on the other hand, stays blue in a base and actually will turn red when it's put into an acid. We've also got pH paper where you dip the uh, paper uh, within uh, one of the chemicals to test it and then you will use the legend in which the pH paper will provide you with. And it'll kind of give you an idea of what the <coughs> pH value is. So there you have it. Uh, regular household, right? Just get red, regular red cabbage, throw it into a blender with water, and there you have your own acid-base indicator.